Hello and uh, welcome to the second of uh, uh, our webinars this week from Thomas Westcott. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Patrick Tigwell. I'm a general practice partner with the firm. And again, it's uh, uh, as usual with these webinars, it's my honour and privilege to be your host for this afternoon. Um, today we're looking at uh, careers in the accountancy industry. Um, and it's obviously a little different from normal webinars where you know, they're about accounts or tax or something like this. Um, so it's, uh, it should be a great session uh, this afternoon. And the kind of things we're going to be looking at um, are the different roles that are available in a modern regional accountancy practice like ourselves, um, the training and qualifications that you can achieve, and importantly, tips on, a, on applying. Um, so to explain all of this, I'm delighted to welcome um, Thomas Westcott's head of HR, Simon Irvin. Um, and I think he's, uh, as we said earlier, uh, before the call, it's uh, his first um, webinar with, with us, although he has done these obviously um, before. And Simon will be um, uh, delivering his presentation in a, in a sec. Um, and for the observant amongst you, you'll see that he is actually our only speaker. So there should be plenty of time for any questions that you may have, um, uh, uh, either as we go or at the end. So uh, if you'd like to ask a question um, and you haven't during the registration process, don't worry, you still can. There's a Q&A button sort of down there. Uh, please sort of uh, put your question on there. Put an anon if you'd rather remain anonymous. And um, as I say, when Simon's finished his presentation, we can attend to some questions uh, at the end. Uh, we're looking for probably about 35 to 45 minutes, but depending on how many questions we'll get, we'll sort of play it by ear. Um, if the webinar finishes and you'd like, uh, you'd still like to ask a question, you still can, and the, the email address is events at thomaswestcott.co.uk, and obviously we'll forward those to Simon and he can um, get back to you directly. Um, and don't, do, do you remember that we can't sort of necessarily answer every kind of question, you know, completely tailored to your circumstances, uh, but, you know, more generic questions are, are certainly fine. So uh, without further ado, um, I'd like to hand over to Simon for the presentation. So Simon, over to you. OK, thanks, Patrick. I'll just um, share my screen. Perfect. Okay, so I'm um, going to talk to everybody about careers in accountancy and financial services. Uh, and what we'll cover is a um, bit of an introduction. Then we'll talk about accountancy careers and qualifications, financial planning careers, uh, desired attributes, skills, experience and qualifications, tips on securing a position. Uh, then a bit about work experience, um, talk you through our current vacancies and then the opportunity for some questions to be asked and hopefully some answers to those as well. So first of all, a bit of an introduction. Um, so for those of you who are new on the call to us, uh, we're Thomas Westcott. Uh, we're a firm of independent accountancy and financial planning practice based in the Southwest with 17 offices across Devon and Somerset. So we've got quite a a big geographical spread. Um, we've got approximately 250 members of staff, uh, which includes 32 partners and 12 directors. And a bit about me, um, I'm Simon Irvin, like Patrick said, um, I've been head of human resources uh, for Thomas Westcott for the past year, uh, but I've been working in human resources for 22 years. So first of all, um, as an independent uh, company, um, we're quite lucky, really, in that we have the same support teams in place that lots of other companies have, such as IT, marketing, HR, and other administration support roles. So very occasionally, those jobs do come up as well. Um, and for example, we're currently recruiting for somebody to join our marketing team as a marketing coordinator, uh, and also as a receptionist in our Holdsworthy office. Um, so that's also kind of quite good about being a, um, a kind of independent uh, local practice. Um, we then have our core accountancy business departments, which is which are accounts, audit, tax, corporate finance, insolvency and payroll. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about, about those. Um, some of you on the call might 
know a lot about them but for some others um, it might be kind of interesting just to kind of know just really a little bit about what we all do. So in terms of accounts um, that's providing accounts and bookkeeping services to clients um, including ensuring compliance with all relevant legislation um, and that includes HMRC and Companies House and also doing management accounts for people as well. Um, audit is about assessing the financial statements of companies to ensure they're accurate and show a true and fair view of that company and its financial status. Um, and an audit will also evaluate internal processes, risk management, and also any areas of concern within the company. Um, mainly audit is done where there's a legal requirement to do that. So there's a certain size, once you're company gets to a certain size, you need to have your um, accounts audited to make sure they're kind of a true reflection. In terms of tax, so we provide services on all areas of tax, and some of those include personal, business, VAT, trusts, stamp duty, inheritance tax, and capital gains tax. So that's making sure you're paying the correct tax, um, but also kind of there's uh, new legislation which comes out which makes certain schemes available, um, and obviously there, there are certain investments you can make which can be kind of tax efficient. Corporate finance. Um, so that is about um, in each stage of its life cycle, um, companies will have different corporate finance needs, um, whether that's raising funds, um, acquiring, merging, restructuring or ultimately selling. Um, so we support companies during all of those uh, times. Um, and that's, again, a very useful service that we provide. Um, insolvency and business recovery. So we are licensed practitioners and we're able to advise on corporate and personal procedures including creditors, voluntary liquidation, company voluntary arrangements, administration, members voluntary liquidation, individual voluntary arrangement, IVA, bankruptcy and informal debt solutions. So that's not just about um, companies who become insolvent, but actually it's kind of helping businesses recover as well. Um, payroll, um, so payroll operations are technical and time consuming business, business, sorry, consuming tasks for lots of businesses. Um, so the introduction of real-time information and pensions auto enrolment um, have added to the payroll processes. Um, and quite a lot of companies outsource their payroll to ourselves, so it can free up valuable administration resources in companies. Um, and also, because we've got a wealth of experience and knowledge in payroll, um, it obviously can make it more efficient than companies doing it themselves. So those are the core um, accountancy um, areas of the business. Um, and again, kind of in all of those areas, we have uh, a number of roles. Um, usually in most of those areas, um, you can start off as a trainee. Um, and then with probably around about two years experience, you could become something known as a semi-senior. Um, and then after three years experience, or if you finished a qualification, and we'll talk about those in a minute, you could be known as a senior or a fully qualified technician. Um, and then we have managerial roles, director roles, and then the partner roles as well. So you can see there's kind of a bit of a kind of structure of moving through the ranks. So I mentioned a second ago about qualifications. Um, so there are three main qualifications that we fund through apprenticeships. Uh, the first one is through the um, Association of Accounting Technicians, the AAT qualification. And um, across the whole of the Southwest, uh, we use a local training provider called Accountancy Learning, and uh, I would say they're probably one of the best um, uh, providers around, um, so much so that um, through my kind of local knowledge, quite a few other accounting practices use them as well. Um, so how that works is one day a week you would study with them, um, and um, that can be either at their kind of learning premises or in the past year it's been kind of remote Zoom um, lectures. Um, and you can do level three and then level four with them. Um, each level takes approximately around about either a year or a year and a half to complete. And they're probably um, most suitable for A level or college leavers uh, because it's kind of the entry level accountancy qualification. Um, it might also be suitable for people who um, maybe um, are trying to just get into accountancy later in life um, because it gives a good grounding about the basics of kind of bookkeeping and other areas of accountancy. Um, the second qualification is with the ICAEW, so it's the Institute of Chartered Accountants England and Wales, and they offer the ACA qualification, which is the Association of Chartered Accountants. Um, so it's a varied study, study pattern, uh, and how that, again, is done through an apprenticeship, it is still 20% of your time off 
through training. Uh, but instead of being one day a week, what tends to happen is um, every four or five weeks, um, you'd have a week off to go to study at a local college. We use Reed um, in uh, Gloucester for that. Um, and then also there's other off the job training you do as well, which um, qualifies for that 20 percent. Um, so this this training qualification is more suitable for graduates or people who are already experienced having that kind of knowledge of accountancy. Um, and then um, also it can be suitable for people who are already fully AAT qualified. Um, it takes three years to complete and rather crucially with the ACA qualification, um, you have to be employed. Uh, by an authorised training provider to complete it. So it's not something you could do by yourself. Um, we are recognised by the ICAW as a recognised partner in learning with them. Um, so that means that you can work and train with us at the same time. But a lot of accountancy firms do not have that uh, recognition. And also um, a lot of employers wouldn't have that recognition either. Uh, and it's quite a well recognised qualification in the accountancy world. Um, there's also the ACCA qualification, which is the Association of Certified Chartered Accountants. Uh, and again, it's roughly the same, the study path for doing that. Um, again, it's 20% of your time off the job training. Um, it tends to be a week away residential at Reed. Um, but the main difference with the ACCA and the ACA um, is that actually um, it can be done uh, in some circumstance without a, an employer. Um, we sponsor both the ACCA and the ACA with the ICEW, um, and it just depends on the person's kind of background and where they are with their accountancy studies, um, with, what, with what they want to do, because sometimes we have people join us who are part qualified on both areas or, or either area, um, so it's usually normal for them to carry on the same path what they're doing. Okay, so that's the main accountancy qualifications which are available and we support. Um, the next bit is about talking about the desired attributes, skills, experience and qualifications, what we look for. Um, so what are some of those? So we've got some consistent items. If you had a look at our um, uh, job adverts and also probably what you find with a lot of employers, um, there's certain things which are quite desirable in this day and age in terms of what we want people to have. So the first one is about IT literacy. Um, so there's been a lot of research in the last year with more people having to work remotely um, that actually kind of people's IT skills have had to improve. And so not just for that, but actually a lot of accountancy work these days is online um, and a lot of other work is online as well. So some of the key skills we look for is people to be fairly IT literate. Um, it doesn't mean you have to have an IT qualification, but it is looking for things where you can competently work your way around a number of, kind of core programs such as Microsoft Excel, Word, PowerPoint, um, emails, um, and just kind of be quite tech savvy, really. The second bit is a team player. Um, as you might have seen with um, me talking about the, the roles earlier in the different departments, um, the only way a true company can be truly successful um, is actually if people work together. So we've got lots of little teams that work together as one big team to deliver what we, we need to do. Um, and we all kind of help each other out. Um, so it's very important that people actually are kind of team players. Personable, that's another kind of uh, standard attribute that we have in a lot of our, um, our roles, um, because actually part of that is being able to get on with other members of staff. And also because a lot of our work is client based, it's being able to actually kind of engage with clients and other people. Um, maybe more specific to Thomas Westcott, we look for positive people. Uh, we like enthusiasm, can-do attitude, um, really kind of wants to make a difference in doing a great job. Um, and also the other final probably consistent thing we look for is professional as well. Um, so um, as a um, accountancy practice, uh, we, are, we do work in a professional um, environment. So we look for people to kind of act responsibly, ethically and professionally. Um, we then have some role specific um, areas that we look for. So, for example, for accountancy trainees, um, we probably look for them to be more analytical, um, detail conscious, conscientious, uh, and also have a track record of passing exams. And some people may think, well, you know, is, is that a bit mean asking for people, you know, that they've got to kind of pass exams in the past? Well, um, what it is with the all the accountancy qualifications, you have to study and have to pass exams with the uh, training provider. 
Um, and if you struggle to kind of pass exams um, through your kind of educational history, I mean, it's likely you may struggle to pass the exams with the um, accountancy qualifications. So then not fulfill the role. Um, so we look for people with a good track record of passing exams. Um, also, problem solving is a very good attribute we look for because actually a lot of it is businesses coming to us for help um, or in terms of, you know, as we work through things, looking for solutions. Um, and also probably one of the key attributes as well is an interest in figures and in businesses as well. Um, having that desire to kind of help clients and help businesses out. So that was some of the attributes. So some tips on securing a position. Um, I think one of the first bits is really doing what is said on the advert. So, you know, if we say on the advert, please supply your CV and a covering letter detailing how um, you compare to the desired attributes, skills, experience and qualifications, um, please do that. You know, it, it really helps do that because actually if you don't, then you might miss something which we might not process your application for. Um, and also um, with that as well, it, it, it is kind of um, making sure you are correct for the position as well. So if you have a look at it and you don't match up to the attributes and what we're looking for, um, it might think actually this job might not be the one for me. Probably the second area um, is research what the role and company is about. So I know I'm kind of being more general than just Thomas Westcott here, um, but that's kind of the purpose, you know, as well as kind of helping you to get a position with ourselves. It's also kind of generally um, kind of careers advice. Um, the more you know about the role and the company, the better. And that's not just about impressing at the interview. Um, again, it's thinking actually, um, you know, is this, is this work for me? Um, and, you know, is this a place I'd kind of want to work at? Um, what I've found also since uh, working in HR in accountancy practices um, around about seven years ago, um, the grammar on applications is also very important as well. And it links back to that professional environment because um, a lot of our communications um, are kind of at quite a high level and there's kind of an expectation sometimes from a lot of clients and other people that actually, you know, we're kind of accurate and professional in what we do. Um, so good grammar on your application uh, would help in terms of uh, thinking actually this person uh, could be a potential candidate for us. Um, another good tip is carry out a mock interview with someone else before maybe. Um, you know, get someone you trust to, to give you feedback. Um, you know, it might be about practicing a Zoom meeting such as now. Um, you know, they can tell you how, how you look, how you've come across. Um, and, you know, they, you could even record on Zoom um, or other um, applications are available, um, but you can record that and get some feedback about how you kind of come across on the video. Something else which can work um, to, to getting a role as well is work experience. So um, you'll find with, with most companies like ourselves, um, people will offer work experience, but they tend to do it more for people who are kind of more local to the, um, the business and also ones who could be um, employees of the future. So, um, you know, if you're studying at college or sixth form at the moment, or you're studying at university, um, you know, applying for a week's work experience or two weeks work experience um, is good because you get that experience. Um, you could be a potential future person for us. Um, and quite often, um, you know, if you, if you come across well at the work experience uh, and you like doing it, um, Quite often there can, there can be a more successful application for trainee vacancies when they come up um, down the road when you finish your um, college or, or university. Um, so at the moment, unfortunately, we haven't got any work experience um, advertised because, um, you know, as per government instructions, we've been asking our teams to work from home. Um, but we expect, um, you know, government advice pending. Um, we hope to have work experience uh, in place again late 2021. Uh, but that is a good source of kind of getting your foot in the door for positions. OK, so a, a bit of kind of um, blatant selling of our um, self now. Um, we have got some current vacancies. So um, current vacancies can be found on our website under careers, current vacancies. Um, and at the moment, what we have is uh, we have an accounts technician senior in our Barnstable um, office. And that'd be for somebody who's already experienced in accounting. 
Um, the same for a manager in Holdsworthy, um, but in particular looking for someone with an agricultural background. Um, compliance and operations manager is a financial planning um, vacancy. Power planner um, is a vacancy in um, Exeter, which is um, financial planning. Training accounting technician um, is a trainee position in Plymouth. Um, and that's kind of the AAT qualification. Uh, receptionist in Holes, we already mentioned earlier. Um, audit manager in our um, extra office. Again, that'd be somebody who's experienced with audit, can either be an existing audit manager or an audit senior looking for their next step. Um, an account senior in Exeter, look for somebody who's already got some experience. Marketing coordinator in Exeter, I've mentioned. Um, a newly announced role last week, insolvency administrator. Um, again, ideally somebody with some insolvency experience there. And then trainee accounting technician in Axminster, which again is another AAT role. Um, so the other thing to talk about very briefly is some of our kind of financial planning um, careers as well. So I haven't got a particular slide for this. Um, and the reason for doing that is, um, you know, there's probably less information um, about kind of career paths in financial planning, because um, although there are some qualifications we, we sponsor, um, generally what happens is people join us um, as a financial planning administrator as a kind of a starter role. Um, and then there's the opportunity to move to be a power planner. Um, which is kind of the role of kind of supporting financial planning advisors. And then there's kind of the advisor role, um, stroke director, and then kind of partnership as well. Um, but there's probably less structure in financial planning careers than there are in kind of um, accountancy currently with us. Okay, so um, I think um, just now it's time to ask for kind of any questions for anybody on the, on the call. Yeah, thanks, um, Simon. Um, what I'd say first is that um, I forgot to say earlier, actually, that Alex um, Eastland, who's part of our marketing team um, and who's hidden herself there, she's um, going to email the slides um, and the, the YouTube link uh, when it's available to uh, to the, our attendees. So, you know, if, um, uh, you can obviously kind of peruse it at your leisure, uh, Simon's presentation. Um, but question, yeah, we have had a few questions come in. Um, sort of Kathy's saying she's keen to hear about opportunities for 18 year olds after A-levels. So um, what about that then, Simon? Uh, yep, yeah, so, um, you know, if, if someone's looking for uh, an accountancy career route after being 18, um, if they're looking to go straight into it, um, probably the, the best route, as discussed, is the AAT route, the Association of Accounting Technicians. And uh, quite nicely, currently we've got two vacancies there. So we've got one in our Axminster office um, and another one in our Plymouth office. And they would both be done under the apprenticeship route um, with accountancy learning. It takes take about a year to complete or a year and a half for each level. Um, and that would probably be the main route for accountancy. Um, we've had a question here from Hannah, and it's something I was going to ask as well. Um, obviously, with COVID and everything, we've where, and I think employers of the future are going to have to be a bit more flexible with, with sort of hybrid working and and flexible working. So, um, how does that kind of tie in um, with um, you know sort of a, a maybe a part time role, but a training a trainee role, but a part time trainee role? Does that work, Simon? Uh, yeah, it can do. Um, we've got we've got a few people in the firm who work part time and do and do the training. Um, and usually, it's kind of being a little bit a little bit more bespoke with them. So both from an AAT point of view and also with the uh, charters, um, it is possible to do it kind of part time. Um, but probably in both cases, it can take a little bit longer. So rather than taking the the three years, so for example, we've got somebody who's been doing the ACCA uh, probably for the last six years working part-time um, what usually helps is you know where, where people apply to us and they let us know what exactly they're looking for uh, and then we can work out whether it is possible speak to the training provider talk to them about what they want to, to do um, yeah so it's something which is certainly possible yeah I think so and um, <clears throat> certainly at my, um, in a previous firm of mine we had a lady that was part-time doing ACCA um, she didn't consider ACA because 
um, this previous firm did send their trainees to read college as well and you're there for a week uh, so that might not fit in with your sort of or it's more difficult to tie in with your family arrangements but AC, ACCA is um, more modular I believe so you can do it you know with the support of your firm you can do it at home um, we've had one from Hayden here. Um, apart from applications, what's a great way to approach accountancy employers and how would you make an effective approach? So, um, I suppose in terms of uh, rather than kind of just applications, um, uh, you know, because a lot of the time there's kind of not job vacancies available. Um, it's probably getting yourself set up on a LinkedIn account uh, and probably, you know, connecting with a few people in the firm. Um, you know, being probably a bit biased, um, you know, connect with kind of people like myself, um, because I'm always interested, you know, if, if I get a LinkedIn request from somebody who um, has got a good profile saying, you know, I'm just about to finish my A-levels or my degree, or I'm already kind of an accountant somewhere, um, you know, I usually kind of connect with people, uh, and it's good to kind of know for the future, because sometimes it might not be you're looking at the moment, but um, when you kind of look at connections, and, you know, through LinkedIn, we, you know, we promote and like our kind of vacancies and other bits going on um so you'll be able to see as things come up so i, I would say get yourself a, a linkedin account I'm, I'm not sponsored by linkedin but um i think that would help um and connect with the right the right people in yeah okay thanks um an earlier question we got um from christian um who's doing a levels in maths physics and chemistry uh, well you have my uh, <laughs> you have my sympathy there christian um Firstly, something I'd like to ask really um, is, and I, I've heard it, heard it a lot, you know, do you need to be a whiz at maths to, to have a career in accountancy? Um, I, I think I think a, a, a basic numeracy in terms of I think, you know, <laughs> um, helps, but a lot of obviously the work these days is done by the computer systems instead. Um, I think in terms of more of a problem solving, interest in business, um, and probably in terms of kind of a bit of a kind of commercial and um, personable outlook um, is maybe more more desirable. Um, you know, I, I, I had the misconception when I was um, a lot younger, you know, many, many years ago back at school. You know, I um, I thought, um, you know, like the question says, you know, you had to be really brilliant at maths to be an accountant. So I never considered an accountancy career. Um, but over the years working in HR, I've had to work with a lot of accountants, both you know, for the past seven years in accounting practices, but also in my previous roles. And, you know, the, the, the accountant in businesses is, is almost, you know, the key person in, in the business because they're looking at the cash flow, the uh, P&L, the forecasts, um, you know, and, and that is a key role in terms of running a, a business. So actually kind of an interest in business and uh, people, um, you know, some of that is kind of probably equally, or if not more important all the time. Okay, and actual actually, Christian's question was obviously doing these A levels, but wanting or interested to know what his option and recommended path would be, um, you know, sort of to obtain necessary quali necessary qualifications after that. So, um, so I think yeah, there's there's a few options. I mean, there's there's a variety of um, let's say you know he's finishing his um, A levels. There's a variety of options. Obviously, people can go on to do. Um, degrees or they can you know join us or other firms to do their qualifications in terms of degrees um i can i can speak from experience of some other firms as well um there, there's there, there doesn't tend to be any degrees where um recruiters like myself would say no we we, we don't like that that's that's not a suitable degree um uh, because actually you know what we tend to find is um most of the accountants apply from doing um, some of the kind of science degrees, you know, again, in terms of doing uh, chemistry, biology, uh, physics, um, but also um, surprisingly, of which a lot of accountants do is actually kind of more kind of geography and history degrees. Uh, also, you know, maths degrees, accountancy degrees. Um, it does it does vary from experience. Um, so I would say, um, you know, for, for us in particular, um, your choice of degree uh, will not um, harm you in any any way in terms of just looking at okay you know what kind of um, studies and what kind of job roles and experience you've got etc. Um, it might kind of um, in, in other firms but for ourselves it's 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 not um, an absolute that you've got to do a mathematical degree or an accountancy degree 
Um, but that's just purely probably for the you know ACA qualification. Yeah, that's an interesting point, actually, because I was always told, you know, back in the mists of time when I was training that you didn't need, I mean, I went to university, I didn't do an accountancy degree, but at the time it was sort of, well, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of degree you do, because it just shows that you've been able to apply yourself for sort of three or four years, and you should be able to be at that level where you could get through the ACA or ACCA training. So, um, yeah, so you don't need an accountancy uh, degree necessarily. Um, very interesting question here from uh, Kailash, so hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Um, Kailash is from India and he, um, and he has work experience of UK accounting for three years. He's qualified in India, but um, is he eligible to apply you know, to TW for a, for a training spot or presumably for any other role within the firm? Yeah, so in terms of, um, you know, people, people can apply for any of the positions, um, you know, it's just through the jobs at thomaswestcott.co.uk um, email, um, and then obviously we, we'll kind of come back to you, um, you know, you, you should get an automated reply, and then if there is any interest, then we kind of come back to you after that. Yeah, but is there any restriction on the fact that Kailash is from overseas? Um, it depends on uh, what um, their um, right to work in the UK is. So um, yeah. some people um, who have um, studied and worked overseas, um, sometimes they're here on a, a spousal visa um, or they've got some permanent right to work in the UK. Um, so it's just going to depend on what their, their right is. Um, if they've um, just got a student right, um, usually it's difficult um, to employ somebody on that. Um, because a, a lot of our roles kind of need more than the very few hours which the, the student visa would cover. Um, and then unfortunately, in terms of for um, visa sponsorship, uh, we're not currently a sponsoring um, organisation. And I think, I think most of the kind of independent firms in the Southwest are the same. Um, I think it's kind of more of the, the much larger national firms are the ones who um, have got the kind of uh, visa sponsor set up. Yeah, OK. Um... Also, um, if somebody's interested, um, you know, can they can they register their interest for future jobs as uh, as they come up? Yeah. So um, on the current vacancies page at the bottom, uh, there's a uh, sign up bit. So if it says you know you haven't haven't got the vacancy at the moment for us, um, you can fill in your uh, contact details and you can opt out at any time. Um, and in terms of when there's a new job comes up, there's kind of a job alert. So you'd get notified of a, a new job. It might not be the one you're interested in, um, uh, but that will kind of help to make sure you don't miss out on any vacancies. OK, and I, I know that we and the, the larger firms almost have a yearly intake of, of, of trainees, um, whether they're sort of, you know, they're, they're normally at the ACCA or ACA level. I mean, do you know at this point how many we're likely to take in the next 12 months or is it just you know, not, not yet decided? Um, yeah, so it, it all depends. So at the moment, um, you know, we've just got our AAT vacancies at the moment. Um, but I think in the coming months, that's kind of where we'll be looking to decide on kind of our future graduate vacancies for uh, later summer and uh, also for next year. OK. Um, Got another question oh, from Cathy again. How would someone apply for work experience? She asks. Yeah, um, so um, I think again on our kind of current vacancies site or the same area to careers, there's a bit about work experience. Uh, so when work experience comes and get uh, alive again, uh, we'll put a kind of link on there to send in your um, application. Um, and uh, I think the other thing you can do in the meantime is if you sign up for the job alerts, uh, when we kind of put the work experience up, you'll get an alert for that. Okay. Um, we've, um, oh, Hannah. Um, yes, she, Hannah's asking here, does she apply for a specific role at TW um, and then choose an ACA or ACCA training programme alongside or actually a specific training programme itself? So um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so what will happen there is um, when we've got a graduate vacancy, um, the vacancy will go up and then that's where it will, it will say um, in terms you can apply for it. And when um, a person gets interviewed, if they've kind of been shortlisted, 
um, that's where the qualification will be discussed. So it'd be saying to the person, um, you know, looking at the person's CV or in terms of what the office preference is, it might be saying, right, you know, we wish to you know, put you along the ACA qualification, um, or it might be saying the ACCA, but it is discussion with the candidate um, because if they've got a strong preference and it suits us as well, um, then of course, you know, we can look at doing that. Okay. Um, we had a question earlier on the registration about um, whether you'd need any kind of technical knowledge um, as a, an interviewee when you're going along to your interview, um, or whether you'd be asked sort of technical questions at that. So what's your, what are your thoughts on, on that area? So, so on that area, it's one of the areas I usually duck out on on the interviews. I, I talk all the, uh, uh, the, the people stuff uh, in terms of kind of, you know, what's happened at your school and education and how would you do something in a people situation. Um, but what tends to happen is for uh, those people who've got uh, no accountancy experience to date and are looking for a trainee position, um, it's usually kind of asking uh, not technical questions about accountancy because, you know, we're obviously thinking at the moment the person hasn't got any any knowledge. Um, it's more about uh, the skills to be an accountant in terms of, you know, might be talking about, um, you know, how do they manage their time? How do they prioritise, um, et cetera, et cetera. For those um, who um, have already got some accountancy experience, um, it would be more probably open questions. So if somebody's already, a, you know, does their accounts for their family or they're an accountant elsewhere, um, it's probably saying, OK, what does your normal day look like? Uh, how do you process the accounts for that? Um, so it's probably using those open questions to find out actually how does this person do their technical job at the moment? There doesn't tend to be an in interview process um, too much technical questions on, on that area. Um, because also a lot of the time people come to us who are, um, uh, let's say, ACA qualified or ACCA qualified. Um, you'd have need to have known what you were doing to pass those exams so the exams have already tested that knowledge yeah i think what you said earlier about getting the grammar right in a in a covering letter because uh, as somebody who has you know sort of interviewed people and and been on that side of the the recruiting process and um, yeah i mean what i would say is um you know sort of be enthusiastic and friendly and smile a lot in the interview find out about the firm you're going for. I mean, the number of times where um, we've had a covering letter and it's said another, another a, a firm's name. Yeah. Same letter, isn't it, that they've sent mm -hmm. off 20 accountants. Um, also do look at the website, you know, make sure you find out, you know, where we are, if you're applying to us, you know, who our managing partner is, you know, these sort of things, and come up with a couple of questions that you can ask us. So it's not just a one way kind of, mm -hmm monologue or interrogation so uh, yeah and get somebody to proofread your, your covering letter um you know because you you could just just miss something silly and it just makes you look silly when you when you're looking like somebody like me is looking at it kind of thing <laughs> um but specifically if you're looking to um it was on the questions earlier we mentioned about uh, or there's a question about a specific thing for tax mm -hmm. to tax train as a tax specialist what would be the um, the sort of the key there. Yeah, so with, with tax, you know, it's one of our uh, biggest areas. Uh, and um, uh, with that, um, whereas kind of our, um, you know, most of our qualifications are accountancy based, there are some tax qualifications out there as well. Um, so sometimes people join us as tax, uh, trainee tax technicians. Um, and that's where they would do the Association of Tax Technicians qualifications. Um, again, that can be done through uh, an apprenticeship. Um, and again, that usually takes like about uh, a year, year and a half to do. It's more kind of a bit longer, probably just about a year and a half. Um, and there's also a, a chartered tax uh, association route as well. Um, but usually people don't go straight in to do CTA. Usually they need um, some experience either with accountancy firms um, or doing the ATT qualification. Or sometimes even some people do the ACA qualification. Um, there are qualified chartered accountant and then they want to diversify into tax they've shown a real strong track record of performance and of passing exams so rather than going through the ATT they go straight to the, the CTA yeah okay um and um, do you know Simon if we are going to be I know we used to attend a few sort of employers fairs and you know we'd have a stand and we'd be able to 
answer questions from you know from young people who are looking for an accountancy career well not just young people I guess but you know are we planning to do any of those now that we're kind of coming out of Covid you know or is yeah so um quite traditionally you know there's there's a number of kind of um areas around the southwest we get invited to um colleges universities um, and for the past um year most of those have been doing, doing kind of online um uh, job fairs um so we've started to attend some of those um, at the moment they're all still planning online ones uh, but once they kind of come back to being face to face um we'd probably be attending those as well okay um question from anonymous person here what advice do you have for someone wishing to change midlife to a career in accountancy what do you think um i'd say do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. Go on, so I, do I, it. I, I speak to my, uh, I've got uh, two young children and I talk to them about accountancy and um, in terms of a career to get into, and I know it's very biased, you know, because people think, well, yeah, he's, he's head of HR for, <laughs> for only saying it. But, he um, would, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But um, in terms of sought after skills, you know, when, when we advertise for uh, a receptionist, um, I would say we'd probably get... 20 to 30 or even 40 applications um, if we apply for um, other kind of support roles again it's, it's broadly similar um, in terms of accounting uh, accounting trainees again very similar but in terms of once you get qualified as a as an accountant um, you know if somebody's got uh, a qualified accountant vacancy and you'll see obviously i've talked about our current vacancies earlier um, you then don't have that same volume of applicant so it tends to be more of an, an applicant's market rather than a recruiter's market um, so the, the key is is once you've changed career got yourself qualified um, there's the old saying about the world's your oyster um, it's you know a great career to get into um, it's you know intellectually challenging as well you know it's very varied um, you get to kind of help a lot of businesses and learn a lot about other businesses um, so I know I'm biased, but I'm not an accountant, um, but I would say it's a very good career to get into. Yeah, I would echo that, actually, because um, I think it's so flexible. It's very well regarded. You know, UK obviously training is regarded well the world over. So if you wanted to go, obviously, COVID notwithstanding, you could go abroad and use your qualifications potentially. Um, it fits around a family and other commitments because you could do it part time. Um, but the level of skill is still the same, but you, you just do two or three days a week rather than five days a week. And you can um, you, you can do your training um, at a firm and then really find out what particular branch of the ones that, say, Simon mentioned earlier suits you. And then potentially you can you can specialize in in those fields. So we've had somebody in our Exeter office who was trained chartered accountant. And now she's in corporate finance, so she's sort of gone off that way. But uh, so it's it's very flexible. Um, it's a it's a it's a great career, and this is why I've, enjoy, I've very much enjoyed my <clears throat> years in the uh, in the profession. Um, I wanted to join the RAS, but, but hey, you know you can't have it all. But this is a great second choice, so and I would recommend it to anybody thinking about it. Um, I think that might be. Um, Oh no, it's the, what are expected, oh dear, yes, here we go, Simon, what are expected salaries for training and then once qualified? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so we, um, it, it all depends. I think if you, if you visit the ICAW website, they will give you a, a, a guideline in terms of um, what accountants are expected to, to earn. Um, I think that's probably my best way to politically answer that one. Yeah, I mean that'll it'll differ, won't it? Depending, yeah. on, you know, whether you're in you're in the middle of Bristol or in Cornwall or in Ex yeah. or wherever you happen to be, and also what size firm you're with. Um, so um, yeah, I mean I think it's certainly uh, in terms of salaries and other thing. It's um, um, oh do, do also bear in mind that your salary for training, um, if it's with us. Um, it's more of a package so obviously you get a salary but we we would pay the training costs which are substantial so you know you don't have to pay those so uh, you've got to think of it all in all in the round really but uh, it would it would depending on what level you're coming in at it depends on that so there's a lot of variables there so we 
So the, 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 you know, just building that, Patrick, the, um, the cost uh, for doing the ACA qualification is around about £25,000 now. Yeah. Um, and then AAT, I think, is still around about, I want to say about six or £7,000. Yeah, because, I mean, you go on these residential courses at Reed yeah. and, and you're sort of, you know, your food and everything, it's all there for you. And you know, so it's... Uh, but it's a it's a great kind of qualification to get, I would say. It just opens the doors for a lot of things potentially in your life. So do think do think very seriously about it. Um, I think that's that'll bring us to a close. Actually, it's forty five minutes. Um, so thank you very much for your uh, for qu your questions. It's great to have some questions sort of live, as it were. Um, and as I say, you know, this uh, recording uh, will be uh, on our YouTube channel, so you can kind of uh, reference that at a later date. Um, and I'd like to, you know, I'd like to thank Simon for uh, his very interesting and informative um, talk to us today and answering the questions very nicely indeed. If you still want to have, answer a question, uh, ask a question yet, yeah, don't forget the events at thomaswestcott.co.uk. And obviously, Simon will, will sort of answer those directly with you. Um, for those of you interested, we our next webinars uh, due to be on the 10th of June. Uh, it's an agricultural one. So strap on your wellies and get your barber jacket on for that one. But uh, that's enough for today. So uh, thanks for attending. Thank you again, Simon. Uh, see you all again soon and stay safe, Devon and Somerset. Bye for now. <laughs>